very good my dear friends very good morning uh, sir good morning sir tirupati assistant professor department of botany government degree college for women jagityal so my dear friends hearty welcome so today onwards our eminent resource person will going to enlights uh, in the field of plant sciences and botany competitive yes. all competitive examinations including Thank cpk 2023 jl dl pgd gurukula jl gurukul dl so like this these are the all competitive exams uh, will uh, going soon very uh, soon my dear friends so, so that's why we are uh, started pre online mode through zoom online class our eminent resource person dr ये कविता मैडम गारू असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बॉटनी आर बी बी आर आर उमेन्स कॉलेज अटानमस हैदराबाद मैडम हैज यूज एक्सपीरियंस इन द प्लांट ऑफ इन द फील्ड ऑफ प्लांट साइंसेस स्पेशली लोअर प्लांट्स लाइक ब्रायोफाइटा टेरिडोफाइटा एंड जिम्नोस्पर्म्स सो दीस आर ऑल द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एरिया ऑफ द ऑल कॉम्पिटिटिव एग्जाम्स इंक्लूडिंग सीपी गेट एंड जेएल सो माय डियर फ्रेंड्स यूटिलाइज दिस वंडरफुल अपॉर्चुनिटी Madam is going to enlighten you. So, Madam, please welcome and uh, share your screen and start your session, Madam. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, good morning to all the participants who are there in this platform. I'm Dr. A. Kavita, Assistant Professor, Department of Botany, R. B. R. R. Women's College, Hyderabad. Uh, so, from today onwards, I'm going to start with the topics related to bryophyte teridophytes. Uh, so let me start today in the class of just introduction to the general characters. Tomorrow night we'll start with the type study. Uh, I hope my class may be enlightening you in approaching all the exam the points. So please you can if any doubts are there in the session please you can raise your hands or at the after the session you can ask me the questions. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity, sir. I'll start sharing my screen. Uh, I hope now you can see the screen. Yes, madam. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Now, so we are going to start with today generally the general characters. So before starting with any of the uh, lower leaf plants or any plant kingdom uh, study, first of all we should have a glance on. What are the general characters in all the respective lowermost plants like bryophyte? Generally, what are the characters we can observe in almost all the genera belonging to that particular plant group? Now, so if you are going to start with the bryophytes, first and the foremost thing I want to tell you that these uh, these bryophytes they are the lowermost plant group of non-flowering plants. and uh, they have been so why uh, this bryophyte the term bryophyte it is derived from a greek word which is called as bryon and phyton phyton as we all know that it is plant body what do you mean by bryon bryon means it's a moss moss means a soft material a spongy material which is always to fleshy that means to say it will be absorbing water it consists of a uh, moist content in that it always appears fleshy in their uh, appearance so that's why we call it as moss okay so they are evergreen like uh, they are due to the moisture presence in their plant body in the nature they will be remaining evergreen so we call it as a moss plant commonly all the bryophytes that represent it as the moss plants now so where do we find them actually growing so these bryophytes they are going to find or they grow in the humid and the shady places they always prefer shady places that means that does not require much of sunlight okay only a little amount of sunlight that is a shade is sufficient for them to uh, grow and at the same time humid condition that means in the atmosphere they should retain at the water content they require the water content so that we call it as a humid regions or the humid conditions so bryophytes always prefer to grow only in this humid and the shady places now and when we also observe in detail about 
where can we find this humid and the shady, shady places? Generally in the banks of the rivers and the lakes. That is in the seashores or in the banks. That is uh, water, the where, where there is a stagnant of water body. Nearby, where there is a moisture content in the soil or in the atmosphere. So uh, nearby to that places, we can see the well growth of this bryophytic plants. And they are very quite small. That is, they are not as uh, huge as the angiospermic plants. They are not such big plants. They are very few and very small plants. And uh, they are another important point. This is uh, the competitive exam question in all the, uh, generally it is a common question. So we describe them as the amphibians of the plant kingdom. That means in the course of evolution, uh, the algal plants. So we have, I think you have completed the algae. So most of the algae, they are the aquatic plants. Lower most aquatic plants. Algae are, they grow in the water. They always prefer to grow in the water bodies. That is, they are the uh, hydrophytic. Okay, they are the uh, aquatic habitat. They prefer the aquatic habitat. So, as a part of evolution, from the algal, the lowermost plant, these bryophytes, they were evolved. So, these are considered to be as the amphibians. That is, they can uh, live in, that means to say that actually these bryophytes are terrestrial plants. They grow on the land surface, but but what are amphibians generally? Amphibians, we call them as they can stay or they can grow in water as well as the land habitat. Frog, we can take the example of a frog, which is an amphibian. It can live on the soil and on the water also. That's why it comes under the reptiles generally. They come under the amphibian. We call them as the amphibians, uh, the frog. Okay. But here, these bryophytes, why we are calling them as amphibians? Because basically, they are terrestrial. That means they grow on the land surface only. But to complete the life cycle, they, are, they require water. Water is a very, very essential component for them to complete the life cycle. It does not mean that they are growing in the water and they are growing, they are surviving on the land. It is not like that. As they require water to complete their life cycle and as they are growing on the land surface, that's why we call them as amphibians. Okay, so don't mistake this term like bryophytes can grow in the water. It's not like that. They require water to complete their life cycle. So hence, they are called as the amphibians. Now, next. Excuse me. Mom, good morning. Uh, excuse me, uh, sir, one second. I'll, I'll just be back within a few minutes. Yeah, thank you, sir. Let me proceed. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you. Sorry for the inconvenience. That was an important call from our madam. Uh, so we were discussing about the bryophytes, which are considered to be as the amphibians of the plant kingdom. So why they are regarded as the amphibians of the plant kingdom? Because they are growing on the terrestrial surface and as they require water to complete their life cycle. So they are regarded as the amphibians. And another important point is they are considered to be as the intermediates of the plant kingdom. That is, they are in between the lowermost thallophytes and the highermost vascular plant, that is the phenyrogans of the plant kingdom. So they are the intermediate. So that is also uh, comes under one of the important points. Now, now, next we'll move on to the habitat. So we'll start with now the general characters. So when we talk about the habit, how is that? So where what, where are these uh, uh, terrestrial plant? Uh, these bryophytes are growing actually. So mostly they are terrestrial. Majority of the bryophytes they are terrestrial. Many few are aquatic. Okay, I'll show you the pictures also afterwards. So many few are aquatic, 
and there are also certain plants which are epiphytic also growing on the other important other higher plants so these are considered to be as the very simple primitive and non vascular plants so this is also another important uh, uh, competitive exam question please you can note down bryophytes these are considered as a simple thallophyte that is a, even the plant body is also regarded as thallophyte uh, as there is no differentiation of root stem and the leaf they are the primitive and also non vascular they does not have any vascular tissues present in them now so they generally grow in moist and shady places and when they are when they when we talk about the aquatic forms of these bryophytes they are generally floating or sometimes they are submerged in the still waters ponds pools and the lake that means they are some are majority of the aquatic forms are freely floating on the surface of the water and few of them are submerged that is they grow inside the water body now when we talk about the terrestrial forms the terrestrial forms are generally found on the soils on the land surface or at the banks or the rivers on the lakes and on the wet walls okay so generally during the rainy season we appear the green color carpet like structure appearing on the uh, walls the walls which are under continuous moist they are continuous wet so we can see a green color cushioned uh, padded like structure appearing on the wall so those are the bryophytes and also in the services attached to the wet rocks so where there is shady where there is no direct sun uh, sunlight falling on them in that places we can see the growth of these bryophytes the terrestrial forms now when we talk about the epiphytic forms example i taken to you as a funaria so these epiphytic bryophytes they appear to be growing on the branches and the trunks of the higher plants that is the higher trees now so when they live in the soil okay so as i told you mentioned they are the amphibians they live in the soil and are dependent on water just for only reproduction to complete the life cycle they depend on the water now you can see these are the few examples like marchantia this is the targonia plagiocasma this is the polytrichum this is a uh, anthocyros risia okay they all these are all the so you can look into here this is a log okay a huge uh, log of the plant so we this is under a shady place not getting too much of sunlight and uh, moist so you can see the growth of this bryophyte it appearing like a moss a carpet like structure green color carpet like structure here developed and the growth on this uh land on this uh, log on the trunk of the plant body this, this is a bryophytic plant now next we'll move on to the this is regarding the habit and the habitat where the plant where the bryophytes are growing now when we talk about how the external structure the plant body how it appears now so here uh, i can call the thallus of the bryophyte as a thallophyte also the lowermost bryophytes the plant body is represented as thallophyte because there is no differentiation here of stem root and the leaf just like algal members they doesn't though they are autotrophic but the plant body is not differentiated into root stem and the leaves so that's why we call them as the thallophytic uh lower most bryophyte they are thallophytic and the thallus that's why we calling here the plant body as a thallus thalloid plant body and it is dorsi ventral uh yes santosh you have raised your hand any doubt any doubt just you can uh, put it in the chat box if you are unable to unmute, unmute yourself no madam i already given to the participants if they are uh, they have any queries please you interact with our respected madam okay okay my dear so, participants yeah yeah santosh is asking about the picture again okay i'll show you the picture this again so here these are the different genera of the bryophytic groups marchantia okay anthocyros this is a funaria or the polytrichum 
uh, so the, this is the anthocyrus capsule. Uh, if you need your polytrichum, the log epiphytic bryophyte. Epiphytic bryophyte. Can you see this one? Okay, different genera of the bryophytes. I hope this is clear. Yes, ma'am. Right. Thank you so much. Now, so we are moving on here, the thallus structure. So what I told you here, the plant body is a thalloid plant body. The lowermost bryophytes are thalloid. That is, the thallus is not differentiated. That is, the plant body is not differentiated into true stem, root, and leaves. So we call it as a thallus. And the thallus is also a dorsiventral thallus. That means to say the dorsal side, that is the upper surface of the, uh, th what we call it as the plant body, it is different from the ventral side. That is the upper surface and the lower surface, we can be easily differentiated, okay, based on the structure. So that's why we call it as dorsiventral thallus. And next important point is, in the life cycle of this bryophytes, we can see two distinct generations. We call that as gametophyte and the sporophyte. I repeat this, the life cycle of the bryophytic plant, it consists of two specific generations, two distinct generations. We call them as gametophytic generation and the sporophytic generation. Now, the main plant, that is the adult gametophyte, the adult gametophyte, the adult plant body is the main parent plant body is a gametophyte. So this is a very, very important, uh, again, a competitive exam question. In bryophytes, the dominant phase of the plant or the parent plant is in which phase? That is a gametophyte. Why we are calling it as a gametophyte? In the due course of our uh, slides, I'll tell you. So uh, you can please note down this. In bryophytes, the dominant phase or the adult plant body is a gametophyte. And remember, this is independent. That means it is, uh, it can prepare, it is green, it is branched. Okay, and it, it remains for longer period of duration in the life cycle. It is independent. That means to say it is autotrophic. It can prepare its own food material. Okay, that's why the plant, the main plant body is considered to be as independent gametophytic plant body. Whereas the another phase or the another generation, what we observe in the life cycle, that we call it as sporophyte. Now, this is sporophyte. This remains only for a shorter period of time. And it is completely dependent on the gametophyte. Okay, it is not independent. This uh, sporophyte, it emerges from the gametophyte. That it comes from the adult plant body in the due course of its life cycle. So, hence, we call it as, it is a dependent on the sporophytic phase or the sporophyte generation. In bryophyte, it is dependent on the gametophyte to complete the life cycle. And it is the shortest duration. This uh, sporophyte generation is very small when compared to the gametophyte. I hope this point is clear for you all. Shall I proceed further? Shall I proceed further? Okay, fine. Right. Right. Uh, so, here when we talk about the plant body, so I told you that uh, the lowermost forms of the bryophyte class, they are thalloid plant body. That is, the plant is thallus. Thallus plant body. And these are prostrate. Prostrate in the sense they will be growing along the substratum. That is whatever the thallus, the plant body is, it is growing in the horizontal manner along the substratum. So whatever the substratum it is, either it is a soil or it is a rock surface 
or it is a, a wall, what or it is a tree trunk, whatever the substratum it is, the thalloid form, the primitive forms of the bryophytes, they are always prostrate and they are thalloid forms. Whereas the advanced forms like funaria, okay, or the polytrichum, they are the evolved forms. That means to say they are the advanced forms. They show a different type of plant body. We call them as erect plant body. That means they have a central main axis, just like the highest group of plants. They have a stem-like central axis and they show the presence of lateral appendages. We call them as the leaves. So as they have the central main axis or the stem, we call them as the erect plant body. I repeat this once again. The primitive forms of the bryophytes, they show the prostrate thalloid plant body structure, whereas the advanced forms, they exhibit an erect and plant body with main axis and the lateral appendages like leaf-like structures. Now, next, whatever, if we talk about the primitive form, that is the thalloid forms of the bryophytes, they are attached to the substratum. Substratum can be, just now I told you, it can be the land, it can be the soil, or it can be the rock, or it can be the tree trunk, whatever it may be. It, they are attached. These are the attached forms. They are attached to the substratum with the help of certain root-like structures. They are not roots, but they are small tubular structures which are unicellular or they are unbranched. We call them as the rhizoids. These are long thread-like structures, filamentous structures, which are unicellular forms by which they are attached, the lowermost forms of the bryophytes, they are attached to the substratum. So we call them as the rhizoids. And even in the erect forms, erect form, that is the advanced forms of the bryophytes, they are also attached ones. But what is the difference here between the rhizoids of primitive and the advanced one? In the primitive, the rhizoids are unicellular and unbranched. So this is again another key point to be noted. The primitive forms of the bryophytes, they possess unicellular unbranched rhizoids. Whereas advanced forms, they possess multicellular branched rhizoids. So this is the main line difference between the primitive and the advanced forms of the bryophytes. Now, whereas uh, the first one we can see here, Risia, this is the primitive form of the bryophyte, where we can see a presence of a number of unicellular rhizoids, which are developing from the ventral surface. So, and remember once again, in a dorsi ventral thallus, already you have studied this points once again, but I'm repeating this. Always the rhizoids will be developing from the ventral surface of the thalloid plant body. And their main function is for fixation and the absorption. They help the thallus to fix in the substratum and also to absorb the water from the substratum. So main, they play a role of just like a root, but they are not roots. They are fine hair-like structures, filamentous structures. Uh, in Marcantia, this is an another uh, primitive bryophyte in which the thallus are dichotom uh, the thallus is dichotomously branched, but we can see the presence of two types of rhizoids here. They are considered as simple rhizoids and the uh, tuberculated. So this I'll explain you at the time of the type study Marcantia. Next we will moving on to the reproduction. So this is about uh, the external structure of the how the plant and the rhizoids. Now, when we move on to the reproduction point of view, so the bryophytes are going to be reproduced by vegetative means and also by the sexual reproduction. So, vegetatively, how they are reproducing? So, vegetative reproduction, as we all know, that that is the vegetative parts of the thallus plant body. 
when they are detached from the plant, they have the capacity to develop into a new plant. That we call it as a vegetative reproduction. So the thallus, so in the bryophytes, the vegetative reproduction is carried out by fragmentation or by tuber formation or by the adventitious branches or the persistent apices and the gamma formation. So these are all the different means of vegetative reproduction. So fragmentation. So what is fragmentation here? That is when the plant body is under the condition of death and decay. That is almost its life cycle is finished. It is almost over to death. So whatever the older parts are still alive, that parts when they are detached from the main plant that is having the capacity to divide and develop into a new thallus that we call it as fragmentation that means any part of the vegetative thallus if it is getting detached by accidentally or uh, by decay of the plant body if they are separated getting separated from the plant body they have the capacity to rejuvenate to regenerate into a new plant that process is called fragmentation Next is tuber formation. So tuber. So what are the tubers? Tubers are some swollen structures which are storing the food material in them during the favorable conditions. Now, so the tips of the branches. So there are certain genera in which uh, the tips of the branches, they are going to store the food material in them. We call them as a tubers. Generally, we call them as the bulbs which are storing the food material. Okay, so these are tubers when they detach from the plant, they will, uh, by the returning of the favorable conditions, they utilize that food material, whatever are stored, and they are dividing and forming a new plant again. That is a tuber formation. Next, when we move on to the adventitious branches, that is the branches are which are developing from the lower surface of the thallus, when they are getting separated from the plant body, they develop into a new plant. This is called as an adventitious branches of vegetative reproduction. Next is persistent apices. What do you mean by this? The apical portion of the thallus where the tissue is a little bit uh, very thick walled. Okay, just like a meristematic activity in the higher plants, the margins or the apical portion of the thallus, they have the capacity of developing into a new plant. So that we call it as persistent apices. Persistent, they are alive for a longer period of time. Okay, they are not getting, uh, they are not having any death for that. Okay, they always, they will be persistent. They will be alive. They will develop, they have the capacity of a meristematic activity of developing into a new plant. That we call it as persistent apices. Next comes to the gamma formation. What are these gamma? These are some specialized bodies, vegetative bodies, we call them as reproductive, propagating bodies, which are developed on the adult plant. Okay, so they are multicellular. They are going to store the food material in them, just like a spores. Okay, so they are developed in the specialized structures called as gamma cups. Now, in this gamma cups, when these gamma, these bodies, when they detach from the uh, plant body, they will, uh, these gamma, they germinate and have the capacity to develop into a new plant. Okay, so they're just uh, acting like a spore. That is in the sporangia, when the spores are liberated out, these spores, they will, germ uh, they will undergo germination and develop into a new plant. The same like that. Gemme are the specialized structures which are observed or developed on the plant body, on the adult plant body. Okay, so these are the different modes of vegetative reproduction where uh, they can undergo vegetative, vegetatively they can reproduce in the bryophytic plants. Now when we move on to the sexual reproduction of these bryophytes, uh, we can see here the sexual reproduction in bryophytes is represented by oogamous type of sexual reproduction. Now, what is this oogamous type of sexual reproduction? 
the reproduction were carried out with the help of two different gametes two different reproductive organs so simply we can define the oogamous means the sexual reproduction in which the male reproductive organ and the female reproductive organ they both are physiologically and morphologically if they, they both are differing from one another then that type of reproduction is called oogamous type of reproduction and here as i told you that the reproductive organs are different that is male reproductive organ and the female reproductive organs morphologically that is structurally as well as functionally they both are different so in the bryophyte the male reproductive organ we call it as antheridium and the female reproductive organ is called as archegonium i repeat in bryophyte the sexual reproduction is of oogamous type and the male reproductive organ is considered as the antheridium and the female reproductive organ is called as the archegonium the male reproductive organ antheridium at the time of reproduction it is going to produce the male sexual gametes we call them as antherozoids the male sexual gametes developed by the antheridium we call them as antherozoids whereas archegonium the female reproductive organ it is going to produce the female gamete we call it as ovum or egg cell now so as we told you that the male and the female reproductive organ that is antheridium and the archegonium they both are morphologically differ from one another how we can say that they are morphologically different because antheridium it is a globose structure okay that means to say it is going to have a small stalk that is it is having a stalk or a stem like structure at the base what we call it as stalk and a body and a globose body okay we call them as globose antheridium okay so the stalk it is a multicellular structure that is the base of that uh, uh, antheridium it is a multicellular and whereas and uh, the body that is the globose body what we talk about so that uh, so ju i'll just uh, annotate here okay i'm going to uh, take a minute here so let me take a pen here the structure will be like this so this is a globose body and this is a stalk so like this okay right so globose body and a small stalk the globose body here it is a multi uh, it is going to surrounded by and another important point to be remember here in exam point of view is the reproductive organ the antheridium and the archegonium in bryophytes they are surrounded by a protective layer what we call it as jacket layer the outer jacket which acts like a protective layer for the internal gametophytic tissue i repeat this once again the, the participants please make a note the reproductive organs antheridium and the archegonium in bryophytes they are surrounded by a protective layer of jacket layer of cells they play a role of protecting the internal gametophytic tissue okay so the antheridia here having a multicellular stalk and a globose body and a globose body here is surrounded by an outer jacket layer and what we call it as uh, below that what we, it consists of an antheridial wall and internally we can see a gametophytic tissue which is called as androcyte mother cell tissue which are going to develop the antherozoids the male gametes and uh, these antherozoids they are motile so this is a very another important point to be noted in bryophytes the male gametes we call them as either spermatozoids or anthrozoids one and the same 
they are motile gametes the male gametes are motile they are moving they can able to move from one place to another place they are consisting of the movement is mainly due to the presence of flagella and the number of flagella are two in number so we call them as biflagellated i repeat the anthrozoites of the bryophytes they are motile and biflagellated i hope this is clear regarding the anthridium now we are moving on to the archegonium the female reproductive organ and here when we talk about the structure it is a flask shaped structure flask how will be the flask having a globose venter as a base which is round in structure and a small and a neck like structure i repeat it is going to have i just to draw i'll take a pen here okay this is not the one so i'll take a mouse only so it will be like this not the mouse one second spotlight i'll take it then so it is going to have a globus round neck like this and a neck so this will be the structure of an archegonium okay i repeat this once again this is a venter we call it as a globus venter a swollen part what we call it as a venter it is a flat shaped structure having a swollen base venter and a long elongated neck region and remember even this archegonium is also the outer layer of this archegonium is also protected by the jacket layer and among this archegonium the globus venter plays an important role here because venter is the one which is going to enclose the female gamete what we call it as the ovum or the egg cell and neck is the region by which these spermatozoids or the anthrozoids the male gametes they will be passing through this neck for the fertilization so neck and the venter together form a flask shaped archegonium in the case of bryophytes now then we are moving on to the that is regarding the reproduction the sexual reproduction and the male and the female reproductive organ next the fertilization here now once the male gamete and the female gamete when they are getting uh, when they get matured then the process of fertilization will take place now from the anthridia the male gamete the anthrozoites they have to reach the and uh, they have to reach the venter or the archegonium for uniting with the ovum that is the egg so here the fertilization process in the case of bryophytes they it takes place only in the presence of water so that's why in the starting slides i told you they are amphibians they require the re sexual reproduction here requires water then only the life cycle completes so this is the one for fertilization that is for the fusion of the male and the female gamete water is an essential component here until and unless water is there the male gametes cannot swim and they cannot reach the ovum for the fusion so that is the main point to be remembered so uh, at the time of rainy season or whenever the water is available the male gametes they will be swimming in the water and they will be approaching the archegonium they will reach the neck through the neck the anthrozoites they will swim they will move pass on into the venter where the ovum mature ovum is available and they will fuse and form the zygote and the zygote here it is a diploid structure and zygote this is one more important point here the zygote here which is a diploid one in the bryophyte the zygote is considered as the starting cell for the next generation which is a sporophyte now till now what i described that is completely a gametophyte that is a gametophytic generation till the formation of gametes the life cycle of gametophytic generation will end 
Now, next generation will start. That is from the zygote. That is after the development of the zygote. The next stage or the next generation will develop what we call it as a sporophyte. Now, what is the sporophyte here? This is the next generation which is developed immediately after the zygote formation. Now, the sporophyte is the generation where the sporophyte is developing the spores. Gametophyte, the generation or the plant body developing the gametes. That's why we call that as a gametophyte generation. Here, this is the structure or this is a generation in which we can see the formation of spores. Hence, we call it as a sporophyte. And another important point here is sporophyte here, it is dependent on the gametophyte for nutrition. It, it, can't, it can't prepare its own food material. Okay, so for food material, for, to develop the spores, to continue the life cycle, for the nutrition, it has to depend on the gametophyte. So sporophyte is dependent Whereas gametophyte, it is independent. So these two points should be remembered. Now, when we talk about the sporophyte, the sporophyte of uh, the bryophytes, it is also a morphologically different. So that's why I told you, the two generations are distinct with each other. They are different from each other. Gametophytic plant is different and sporophytic plant is different. They are distinct. They are totally different. So when you talk about the sporophyte, how it is different, it is going to consist of the three parts. One is called as foot, seta, and the capsule. I repeat this. The three parts of the sporophyte are foot, seta, and the capsule. Now this is sporophyte. It is developing from the ventral region of the gametophyte. Now, so when you talk about the sporophyte structure, the foot is a basal part that is the base of the sporophyte which is embedded in the gametophytic tissue i told you this is dependent on gametophyte that means to say it is attached to the gametophytic tissue so with the help of the foot the sporophytic generation is attached to the gametophytic tissue and this foot is helping in absorbing the food material now next comes the seta the next part what we talk about the seta it is acting like a conducting tissue that means just like it is helping in supplying the food material from the foot region to the capsule region. And so this capsule, this is the most important part of the sporophyte where this capsule is going to develop or it is going to enclose the spores. Now these spores, they are non motile They are dispersed through the wind and these spores they germinate when they are released from the capsule or from the sporophyte, they will be germinating and developing into a new adult plant or the gametophyte. Okay, now so these bryophytes they exhibit the regular and distinct alternation of two generations, namely gametophyte and the sporophyte. So we call them as alternation of generations. I repeat, in bryophytes, we can see two distinct generations, that is gametophytic generation and the sporophytic generation. They both are different from one another. They both are alternating with one another. Gametophytic generation, it is alternate with the sporophytic generation. For it, Within a single life cycle, we can see the presence of these two generations. So such a phenomenon is called as alternation of generation. So this we observe in the bryophytes. This is an again a key point to be noted in the uh, COM-2 exam. So which type of alternation of generation is observed in bryophytes? That is a gametophytic generation alternating with the sporophyte. That means to say adult plant is a gametophyte. I repeat, adult plant is a gametophyte. It alternates with the sporophytic generation. Okay, it is vice versa in pteridophyte. In pteridophyte, sporophytic generation will alternate with the gametophytic generation. So don't get confused. So this is a very important point to be noted. 
So gametophytic generation alternating with the sporophyte. So that's why gametophyte is a main plant of the bryophytic generation or the bryophytic plant. I hope this is clear for you all. So this is uh, regarding the overall a general uh, study or the general characters of the bryophytes. I'm stop sharing. Okay, this is about the general characters of what are the important points always gets repeated in the types uh, that is in the type studies. So all that I have focused. So anything yet to be from tomorrow, we'll start with the type studies. So any doubts regarding this, please? Anyone? I hope I have covered all the points, sir. Did I cover all the points and any point to be missed? Yeah, yeah. Mm, uh, to, so regarding of this class, uh, my dear friends, the general chemistry features of the bryophyta, the total chemistry features are covered in this class. During this class, if you have any doubt or any okay. queries, please ask our respected madam, my dear friends. Okay, madam, thank you. So tomorrow, same time, we will meet uh, through this, this our Zoom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very right, much. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, 